Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to my newest members. Yahya Kerem, Serdar Turkos, Christian Anderson, Steve Stark, and Manfred Rudiger. I hope I didn't mispronounce your names. Thank you for becoming a member. Members are giving shout outs in my videos. You can easily become a member by clicking the join button. And if you become a member and I haven't given you a shout out in my videos, please let me know in the comment section or the post that I am about to send. All right, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be solving a radical problem, a very radical one. We have x plus 3 over square root of x equals 8. And we are supposed to evaluate square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. Now, these problems have a very special flavor, which we'll talk about. But let me go ahead and give you a different version before we start talking about that. So sometimes you're given something like this, x plus 1 over x, right? Let's say x plus 1 over x is given as, I don't know, 5, okay? As long as it's greater or equal to 2, I guess that would be okay for x real. And then uh, they might ask you something like this. And this would be fairly easy because what you would do is set it equal to r for radical and square both sides. And then that would give you x plus 1 over x plus the product of these 2ab is going to give you 2 equals r squared. And you do know that this is equal to 5 from here. So r squared would be 7 and r would be square root of 7. Easy, right? But this problem is different. I just wanted to show you this because this problem also very common. You'll see that a lot. Anyways, so this is more special. How do you solve these kinds of problems? Well, I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one, obviously, right? So for my first method, I'm going to go for the solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. x plus 3 over square root of x equals 8. Let's go ahead and isolate the radical. Uh, we could probably do the following. Subtract x. And then this is going to be 8 minus x. And then switch these around, or you could probably just cross multiply, but don't distribute the square root of x. And then square both sides. Now, squaring both sides without distributing definitely makes sense because you don't have to get into the square of x root x. I, I guess that, that would also work, but let's do it this way. This is going to be x, and this is going to be 8 minus x squared, and the result will be 9. And then from here, we're going to get something like this. Let's go ahead and expand this. 64 minus 16x plus x squared, and then it's equal to 9. And then when we distribute, we're going to get x cubed minus 16x squared plus 64x minus 9 equals 0. So here's the problem. We ended up with a cubic equation, right? And how do you solve a cubic equation. First of all, at this point, you could probably look for rational solutions, looking at factors of 9, could x be 3, could x be 1, could x be 9, and you can kind of find something from there as well. But anyways, that would be helpful. Let's go ahead and take a look at it that way. So here, we have this equation, so could x be something that's easy to guess? What about x equals 1? Well, x equals 1 gives me 1 times 7 squared, obviously that's not equal to 9. How about a 9? 9 times 8 minus 9 squared. 8 minus 9 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. 9 times positive 1 is obviously positive 9. So x equals 9 actually works. Great. So x equals 9 is a possible solution. What can I do with that? Well, Knowing that x equals 9 works, we can go ahead and divide this by x minus 9 using the factor theorem. Or we could just, you know, arrange these terms to make them divisible by x minus 9, right? Like this. We can just write this as x cubed minus 9x squared. And then, of course, you do need negative 16, so you would have to subtract 7x squared. And then this has to be followed by something like plus 63x, so that when you take out a negative 7x, it's going to be divisible by x minus 9, as you can see. And then I have to add an x to it, and that'll do the deal. Now we can go ahead and group this in factor. So it's going to be x squared times x minus 9 
minus 7x times x minus 9 and 1 times x minus 9. Obviously, x minus 9 is a known factor. We knew that, right? And then the rest is going to be x squared minus 7x plus 1 equals 0. From here, we get a bunch of solutions. Obviously, the first one is x equals 9. And the quadratic gives us two other solutions, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 49, minus 4ac, which is minus 4, divided by 2a. And that's going to give us 7 plus minus the square root of 45, which can be written as 3 root 5. And that's going to be the value of x. Great. So we got two radical values. I told you this problem was very radical, and we're just starting. So now my goal is to evaluate square root of x plus 1 over square root of x. And obviously, this would be a good question. Is any of these x values going to work? Something to check, it, check out, right? So for example, if x is equal to 9, can I just plug it in? Let's try. If x is 9, then we're going to get 3 plus 1 over 3, and that should give us 10 thirds. So it looks like that's the value of the expression based on this x value. Now what happens if you plug these in? That's for you to test and let me know what you find. Okay? But let's go ahead and talk about the second method because second method is so much fun. Alright, great. So for the second method, let me rewrite the problem. x plus 3 over square root of x is equal to 8. And then I'm supposed to evaluate root x plus 1 over root x numerically. Okay. Let's see if we can find the same value, and if we don't, what happens? So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the 8 as 9 plus, what am I saying? 9 minus 1, that's what I meant. And then, take a look at this expression now. x plus 3 over root x is equal to 9 minus 1. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these terms together in a nice way so that I can factor it. Okay? Let's go ahead and do this. Add 1 to both sides and then subtract x, and then here's what we're going to do. This is called mathematics, or hocus pocus, abracadabra. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a common denominator first, and then this guy over here is critical. We're going to factor this using the difference of two squares, but x is not a square. Well, sort of. It's square root of x squared, so this is like 3 squared minus square root of x squared. So it's kind of like difference of two squares. Let's write it as 3 plus root x, multiply by 3 minus root x. Awesome. What am I going to do? 3 plus root x cannot be 0 if x is real because square root of x is greater than or equal to 0. So these two can be cancelled out. Leaving us with 1 over square root of x equals 3 minus square root of x. What am I going to do with this? Add square root of x to both sides. If we do, we get square root of x plus 1 over square root of x is equal to 3. Okay, great. Now let's go back to what we found. We did get 10 thirds from here because x was equal to 9, and that gave us 3 plus 1 third. Why, why are they not equal? That's something to think about. Yeah, we probably made a mistake, and if there's a mistake, what is that? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.